It's time to settle this heated debate about Jesus once and for all. Is he God? Is he son of God? Is he part of a trinity? Is he a prophet of God? What do you think? Do you know that the Bible describes God as one and Jesus as a prophet of God in more than 60 verses? If you really care about salvation, this video might open your eyes to the truth. This video might change your life forever. So please watch it until the end first and then judge. You have nothing to lose. Open your Bible with me and make sure that every verse that we read together is exactly how it's written in your copy of the Bible. Before we start, we need to understand what the word Father means first. John 8, 42 Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. What does the word Father mean here? Is he asking if God is their biological Father? Or does it mean that if you love God and obey God, you will love me? John 8, 43 and 44 Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you will carry out your father's desires. From these verses I understand that the word father means whoever you want to follow. If you choose to follow God, then God is your father. But if you choose to follow the devil, then the devil is your father. John 20, 17 Jesus said, I'm ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. From this verse I understand that God is his father and our father too, not only his father. So the word father means the one that I decide to follow and obey. So if I obey God, then God is my father. Matthew 5, 9 Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. It is stated very clearly here that righteous people are called children of God because they considered God to be their father. Chronicle 28, 5 and 6, talking about the Lord, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit in the throne. He said to me, Solomon, your son is the one who will build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Then God chose Solomon to be his son, and God will be his father. Then son of God is an expression used to refer to a righteous person who obeys the commandments of God the Father. Exodus 4, 22. Israel is my firstborn son. Here the whole nation of Israel is called God's firstborn son. So again, the word God's son is used to describe anyone who is obeying and following God, the father. Genesis 6, the sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful and they married. Now you tell me what sons of God means, write in the comment section below. Also historically, many rulers have assumed the titles such as the son of God or the son of heaven. It was a nice expression used a lot to describe how close you are to God and how are you obeying him and following him. Now we're ready to read more than 60 verses from the Bible describing Jesus as a man who was assigned the role of a prophet from the one and only God. Gospel of John John 6, 38 For I have come down from heaven not to do by my will but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus is a prophet. He's not speaking based on his own desires. He's fulfilling the will of God who sent him. John 7, 16. Jesus answered, My teachings is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. So Jesus is a prophet sent by God. He's not talking on his own. He's telling us what God teached him. John 8, 25 and 26. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy. And what I have heard from him, I tell the world. Jesus is delivering to us what he heard from God. This is what prophets do. John 8, 28 and 29. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Jesus is the Son of Man. God taught him what to say. God sent him to us. Jesus wants to please God. Make sense? John 8, 40. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Again, Jesus is a man. God told him the truth, and then he is telling it to us. John 4, 19. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Mm -hmm. Jesus is a prophet. 
John 4, 25 and 26, the woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So what was the job of the Messiah? To explain to the people everything, to explain to the people how to worship God, and he did. John 4, 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. God sent Jesus, a man, to finish his work. This is literally the definition of a prophet, like he sent Abraham, Moses, Noah, and many other prophets. John 5.19 Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. So Jesus can't do miracles by himself. He can do miracles by the will of God, the Father, like every other prophet. For example, Moses split the sea by the will of the Father, God. Moses is not God. Moses is not Son of God. Moses is not part of a trinity, but God gave him the ability to do miracles. John 5.30 By myself I can do nothing, I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Again, Jesus can do anything by himself, because he's just a man, but God can give him the ability to do whatever he wishes. Jesus is not all-knowing like God, he can only judge as he hears, and of course, he is always trying to please God who sent him. John 5.27 And he has given me the authority to judge because he is the son of man. Okay, so Jesus is the son of man. Authority was given to him. If Jesus is God, he will not need someone to give him authority. John 17, 1 and 2 He looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify the Son, so the Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over people. If Jesus is God, who is God praying to? And who is giving God authority? John 17, 3 and 4 The only true God and Jesus Christ I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. It is very clearly written that there is only one true God and there is Jesus. And what is the relationship between them? God sent Jesus. God gave him work to do. John 7, 40. On hearing his words, some of the people said, Surely this man is a prophet. Unfortunately, most of these men, the early Christians, who agreed on the fact that Jesus is the prophet of God, were prosecuted by the Roman Empire. We will explain that later at the end of the video, so stay tuned. John 9, 17. The man replied, He is a prophet. May God send this man to eternal paradise, him and all who believed in Jesus and followed him for real. John 10, 29, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. Of course, my father, my God, is greater than all. He didn't say I am greater than all. John 12, 49, for I did not speak on my own, but the father who sent me commanded me to say all that. This rule applies to all prophets. They don't speak on their own. God teaches them religion, and then they teach us. John 13, 16, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Jesus referred to himself as a servant and a messenger. John 14, 15 and 16 If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. He's referring to himself as an advocate that God sent, and telling you that God will send another advocate. What does the word advocate mean? If the word advocate means biological son, does that mean that God will send another one of his biological sons later? How many sons does God have? And if the word advocate means prophet, who is this other prophet that Jesus is referring to that God will send after him? Let me know your answers in the comment section below. John 14, 24. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. It's clear by now that Jesus is a prophet that God, our Father, sent to deliver a message and teach us our religion. John 14, 28. For the Father is greater than I. I have a question here. If Jesus is God himself, how come the Father is greater than him? Shouldn't they be equal? After all, they are both God, right? Why is one part of God greater than the other? Gospel of Matthew Matthew 4, bar 1 Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Can the devil tempt God? 
Because in James 1.13, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. It is very clear that the devil cannot tempt God. Then how is Jesus tempted by the devil? And at the same time, how is Jesus God? Matthew 8.20, Son of Man. Matthew 12.18, Here is my servant whom I have chosen. Matthew 18, 11, for the Son of Man. Matthew 21, 11, this is Jesus, the prophet. Matthew 21, 46, he was a prophet. Matthew 26, 2, Son of Man. Matthew 26, 39, going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. By the way, why aren't Christians right now praying like Jesus did? He fell with his face to the ground and prayed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And also, if Jesus is God, why is God praying and who is he praying to? Matthew 28, 18, all authority has been given to me. Gospel of Luke. Luke 4, 8. Jesus answered, It's written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. He didn't say worship me too, just serve him only. Luke 7, 16. A great prophet has appeared among us. Luke 9, 19. One of the prophets. 9, 22. The Son of Man must suffer. God does not suffer. Luke 11, 20. I drive out demons by the finger of God. Prophets get their great ability from God. Luke 18, 19. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. Why can't we call him good if he's God? He's clearly saying here, I am not God. This is why you can't call me good. Because only God is good. I am not God. Luke 24, 19. He was a prophet. Gospel of Mark. Mark 6, 4. A prophet is not without honor. Mark 9, 37. The one who sent me. Mark 11, 12. Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it has any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season of figs. First of all, God is never hungry. Second of all, God should be all-knowing. How come he didn't know that there was no fruit in the tree? Then Jesus is not God. Mark 12, 29. The Lord is one. The Lord is one, not three, and not three in one. Mark 13, 32. But about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Jesus said he doesn't know when the hour will come, but only God is all-knowing. Mark 15, 34, and this is a nice one. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? How come God is crying for God to help him? Does that make sense to you? Let's know in the comment section below. We don't want this video to be hours long, so we will give you only some examples from the rest of the Bible. Isaiah 40, 18 to 25. With whom then you will compare God? To what image will you liken him? To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Nothing is like God. God has no image, God can't be seen, but we could see Jesus. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Jesus does not fit any of the descriptions listed here about God. Psalm 102.27 But you remain the same, and your years will never end. God will remain the same, will not change to be a baby, then change to be a man, then change to be a buried body, and then get resurrected. God doesn't end. God can't be killed or crucified. Psalm 50.12 The Mighty One, God, says, If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all that is in it. But Jesus was hungry after he fasted 40 days, and Jesus needed to pray, eat, drink, and even cry to God for help. Jesus is not God. Deuteronomy 6.4 The Lord is one. 
God is not three in one, God is not two in one, God is one. Numbers 23.19 God is not human, God is neither a man nor son of man. Habakkuk 1.12 My God, the Holy One, you will never die. Again, God does not die, God does not get crucified. Hosea 11.9 For I am God, not a man. 1 Timothy 1.17 Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God. So God is immortal, he can't be crucified. God is invisible, but people could see Jesus. Hebrews 1.12 But you remain the same, and your years will never end. God will never change. Then why did he become a mortal man? If you're in shock now, I'm sure that you've never read the Bible before because every page in the Bible screams that God is one and Jesus is one of the prophets of God.